Greetings from New York. Big shout out to my new friends down in Texas, my new friends down in San Juan. Also my new friends, and particularly to my new friends down in Aruba, who saw me going bananas by the bar this weekend as I was cashing out on some of these bets. Welcome to the Access of Combat podcast, episode 47. I am one half of your host, Hugo the Boss, Hugo Got Next, joined by my co-host. It's your boy, Ray, Ray Boogie, Ray Yo from the AO. Shout out to none of my friends in Aruba, <laughs> none of my friends in Texas. Your boy does not travel. What's going on, my brother? It's all good, baby. You got. We got to get you out, bro, bro. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> but soon, before we get into these bands and these tads, bars. I became a rapper down there. Mm. You already know the deal. Like, follow, comment, subscribe. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Everybody enjoying these visuals right now? Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, you already know. Let's definitely just jump into it. Um, just got back from a nice trip um, in Aruba. I, I've been traveling all month long. It's been a beautiful experience. Thank you again to everyone that I met along the way. You guys have been extremely nice and wonderful to me. I appreciate you all. And um, for the people, especially, you know, at the bars that were watching these fights with me and were like tailing some of my bets as well as um, going against me, I, I appreciate you. You know, it was fun, you know. All the Kevin Holland betters, I feel bad for you. Shambles, boy. <laughs> Shambles. Uh, we had a great night, especially after getting rinsed in boxing the night before. Oh, yeah. Reverse swept. Oh, my goodness. So it, it came out to be a very good weekend. But before we jump into this UFC Apex card, let's uh, recap the bets from last weekend. And we'll tell you when the long shots are coming on because a lot of long shots, obviously not a big unit play. So we didn't lose a ton on it. It's going to sound like we lost a lot, but not really. So, um, But let's get right into it. So we had Ninganu's money line. Mm. Start with the boxing first. Oh eh? my god, <laughs> my boy, that hurt me, man. I got depressed after he got knocked out. Well, technically, this is the hedge play. Yeah. So yeah, we got hedged out, bro. To, to cover the Ninganu money line, Joshua decision, mm. and of course he, he murks him in two. Oh my goodness! Only way to lose that was the Joshua knockout, and of course, yeah, and then of course our boy Zhang drops Joe Parker two times. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get the knockout. Ah, mm. oh, baby. I mean, just rough. It's all good, man. We only actually lost two units on that, which isn't terrible considering the value on some of the plays there. So I'm not very mad. But now we'll jump right into uh, UFC long shots. Um, uh, Moreau's via sub rounds two and three. Mm. I'm a buy of sub two and three. Mm. Chukagan slash Sermonera. Perfect. Uh, that's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, via split decision at plus 650. Fight was close. I thought Macy did win, but that's why it's a long shot play because I thought the fight was going to be close. I, li I like that split decision play. So Yeah, it was it was juiced, man. Uh, St. Denise round two, round three, and round four. Mm. Dustin putting him in a, in a, in a body bag, um, which I knew could happen. And then for the actual plays that I actually lost a lot of money on, Burns money line. Who was winning the fight till he wasn't, unfortunately. He was up on two judges' scorecards and St. Denis, which I, I put a little bit of juice on. I don't regret it because I think he could have won the fight. I think he probably had staff. He blamed it on dehydration. I, I think it was the dehydration from the medication that he was taking. At the same time, I think he still, I think he came out way too hot. Correct. Way too hot. Like he wanted to get Dustin out of there. And I, I feel like if they run that back again, I think things are a little different. I think San, San Denis took a lot of lessons from that L. Yeah, and the one you want the real the way Dustin jumps guillotine. It's Jesus. He's not he's not beating Islam like that. I want him to jump Gilly on, on Islam. That'd be hilarious. He's going to. He's going to because I mean he's selling merch now. Yeah, don't, don't be, be silly. silly. Jump to jump Gilly. Gilly. <laughs> That's hilarious. But now for the big plays. Uh, I'll start with the parlays because I actually put a unit on two of them, but. You know, they're actually small relative to the money line plays we made. Um, I took Gamrot's decision, the Spain's knockout for one parlay at plus 125. That hit Munoz and Phillips over two and a half. Gamrot Dos Anjos over two and a half. Yan and Yadang over two and a half. All great fights. I knew they were going to go to distance. All durable competitors in those matchups. And then for the money line plays, Lynn's a, a, a unit and a quarter. Blades, two units. Um... Michael Page, four units. Payday, oh. payday, 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 payday. You want payday? <laughs> it was it was a big weekend for the Axis Combat Crew. That's all I gotta say. We 
definitely salvaged the boxing because we got rinsed. Um, very, you know, a happy, you know, this and that, you know, always happy when we hit. Um, we've nailed these pay-per-view cards this year. So we want to make sure we start hitting some of these cards in between a little better. And we're going to start this weekend. I mean, listen, so. you finished. I mean, again, we finished negative two on, on the boxing, like you mentioned. But you finished six and a half. Let's, let's brag a little bit. You finished six and a half units up on UFC. Yeah. You was. Yeah. Fire, boy. My homies in Aruba. Y'all yeah, already know. I was going nuts at the bar. <laughs> I was going crazy at the bar. Just going crazy, you know, with uh. So how some of these fights were playing out, you know? Um, like I said, it's just good reads. You know, you know the game. You understand the game. You understand how to play your money. Um, I thought the most obvious play was MVP, man. I thought that was... I, I, we got the yeah. line at plus 145 when the line actually became available in the U.S. And we immediately threw two units on it. And he was still plus money come fight night. Play another two units. Yeah. I only, my, my only regret's not max betting him at five. You know, I, I, it was easy as day to see what was going to happen in that fight. I mean, yeah. that was partially my fault. You know, I take a little blame for that. I kind of like, I was like, hey, man, Kevin Holland look a little serious. He was like, serious. He, he just, he, he just, really wanted to win that fight. He did. He did. It's just, I, I like I said, he did. We knew he yeah. didn't have the tools. He does not have the tools. He doesn't have the IQ. The only time he took MVP down was in the second round, and that's after MVP tripped, which I said in the last podcast. The only way he's going to get an advantage in this guy is if he falls down. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. And he's still, MVP was still able to get up. And I think people just really underrated this guy's ground skills and his ability to get up and not take too much damage on the floor. I think he's underratedly strong, a lot of things. And then Curtis Blades was another easy play for me, even though Jalton was ragdolling him. Thing is, I, I do think Curtis did have somewhat of a game plan. I know you disagree with me. I don't think so. I don't think he expected to get taken down, but I think that's why he was fighting behind the black line in the cage because he knew he could cage walk, get back up, and make this guy work. I, um, think, I think the game plan came after the first round. Correct. Yeah, that's he fine. He came out and he was like, you know what? I'm going to stay against the cage. I know he's going to try to shoot on me. If he shoots on me, and I think he even mentioned it. He was like, listen, I know I'm a little heavier. Put the belly on him yep. so he couldn't pick his head up. And just like he hammered it away, boy. Smash him. Jalton's too limited, man. That's a, it was just an easy play. Only reason I didn't put four units on it, me and you didn't commit to Curtis Blades. Like, you didn't commit to no, Curtis. I, I picked Almeida. So, I, you know, after the first round, I was like, mm, yep. mm, you know what I'm saying? But Yep. And, 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 and the only reason you, um, you didn't play Curtis is because of Fight IQ. Yes. And, and yes. I, that's the only reason I didn't commit more. I just thought when he flipped to plus money, I said, I got to put another unit on him. Like, He's one of my, you know, he's, I, but I understood people for being on the Jalton side, especially during the first round. But once I seen Jalton couldn't really get his back and I seen him kind of huffing up, I said, my boy's got this in the bag. Like he's going to get him out of there at some point. So, you know, it is what it is, but it was a, it was a great night. And my brother can talk to you about his great night. Cause he had a great night as well. Yeah. I had a pretty solid night or weekend overall. I mean, I'll start with the boxing where like you reverse swept, uh, put a, a unit and a tenth on the Zang KO, and I got reverse Zang Bang there. Oh my God! And uh, <laughs> the hedge play, <laughs> uh, Nangano money line, Joshua decision. Played that to win about a unit, a unit to win a unit. Only way to lose that, like you said before, the Joshua KO. Man, all right, I felt bad. That one, that loss, seeing Nangano go down like that, that hurt my soul. I got depressed. It was extremely depressing. Yeah. It was bad. Bad knockout. But uh, the UFC, we'll start with the long shots. Reverse swept on the long shots, but I only really, you know, sacrificed about a unit here. We got like Moreau's sub round two and three. Three. Uh, Almabayev two and three. Took a shot on the Lin sub. Gamrot round three. That one was probably a bad. No, no. Oh, I don't know. Well, you hit that Yan Yan, uh, the Yan one, but you'll get to it. Uh, Barber, round two and three. Mm. And St. Denis, round two, three, and four. Mm. Three parlays, hit them all. One parlay had the Despaña or the Spain Parisian under one and a half parlay with the Pereira. Olin Jacek fight does not go to distance. Payday. payday. <laughs> I didn't mean to hit that one, but it, yeah, I mean, it was a little payday. Payday, payday. payday baby. <laughs> uh, other parlay hit. Gamrot decision. The Spagna KO. Hit that. And then I got a three-legger here. Munoz, Phillips, over two and a half. Gamrot, Dos Anjos, over two and a half. 
Yan Yadong over two and a half. Hit that one. Moreau's sub. Mm. Clapped. Seminara decision. Mm. Almeida money line. Mm. And then, you know, two units on Saint Denis. Mm. That one hurt a little bit, but ain't hurt as much because hit that Lynn's money line. Hit that Yan third round decision. That was a beautiful bet. You know, I wasn't sweating this one. Jack Della. He was sweating <laughs> like a pig. Hit that Jack Della. A pig in the hot summer, bro. Knocked him out with a broken arm. <laughs> Hit that again. Hit that again. Come on. And then four units total. Biggest bet. Michael Venom Page. MVP. Payday. 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 Easy, man. You want payday. Overall, four and a half units up in the UFC. Pretty good night. I'm happy with my uh, decision making and uh, overall profitability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a nice bounce back. We, we this is like two or three pay per view cards in a row that we've been we've been positive, right? Because we we were positive, I think, on the Strickland card. Um, we were definitely positive on the Taporia card with Volk. We yeah. we nailed that. We've we, been hitting the pay per views up and a little up and down on the fight cards, but on the you know on the Apex cards and shit like that. But like you know overall, we've been pretty doing pretty good. Yeah, the, the, these pay per view cards are so bettable. Like that's the truth. Like you just gotta know which side you're going with. To be frank, um, and um, I think that um, the Apex, like this Apex card, this card, what we're gonna speak about now is kind of like a little scary. We gotta find some value for you guys. And we're going to let you know where you should be playing it. But, of course, we're going to wait. Some of these fights, we have to wait till Friday just to see weigh-ins, just to see how all this is going to play out because there's a lot of variables to some of these fights. But, you know, we've been good to you guys so far. Trust us all the way. All the way through, baby. So let's get into it, brother. What you got for me? First fight on this 13-fight uh, UFC Apex card. Uh, we got Chad and Helliger going one-on-one -on -one with Harlampos Gregorio. Uh, this is a Bantamweight fight, and we got the monster and Helliger. 12 and 7, fighting out of Canada, hailing from Canada, 37 years old, going against the ferocious Hampalos Gregorio. 8 and 3, hailing from Cyprus, fighting out of New York, 31 years old. I usually fade these, uh, these Longo guys. I know not everybody is like, uh, you know, Aljamain Sterling and Marab. And we're New York guys, by the way. And listen, I try not to. Again, we're, you know. New Yorkers. I try to support the New York guys whenever I can. Even though we got um, cats on the hats today. We got a. Uh, <laughs> Don't pay attention to the hats. Jacksonville man. and uh, the. They just match the fits. Carolina. You know oh, yeah. <laughs> we just dress for the swag, guys. We out here looking real Southern right now. With these hats. <laughs> but uh, Gregorio, I mean, listen, I think he's got solid. He's got solid striking. I think his bread and butter is the leg kicks. He hits hard. Leg kicks very, very, very hard. His game plan more or less is to, you know, leg kicks and then take you down, beat you up. And Helliger, I think he's a solid fighter. He's 37. That's very old for the Bantamweight division. A little long in the tooth. I think Ann Helliger is a little bit of an overachiever. And that's not like a, uh, I'm not trying to disrespect. I think what he's accomplished is, you know, I'm happy for the guy. I think he's a nice guy. Um, unorthodox kind of striker. He's got like kind of a karate stance kind of thing. You know, he likes to throw like these funky little back elbows and uppercuts. I think he's decent. Has never been knocked out. He has been rocked. I think Gregorio is the side here. I don't really like picking people making their UFC debut. And, and I don't like these Sarah Longo guys, like I said. I don't think he's even Sarah Longo. I think it's Longo Weidman now. But um, Gregorio, I think he's good, and I think he's live early. I think if this fight gets extended, and Helliger could be a little bit, a little bit live in, in the third round because I think I trust his cardio more. But I think Gregorio's the side here. I think Gregorio could probably get the finish, and Helliger doesn't really check leg kicks. And Helliger's like competition. I mean, he beat Jose Johnson. Oh, no, he lost to Jose Johnson. I'm not too high on Jose Johnson. And he's Spanish, bro. He lost to Ann Helliger. I <laughs> thought he just got beat up. Yep. He got beat up there. Um, his two wins in the UFC. Questionable. Uh, I, I mean, listen, I'm not going to say those guys are bums, but, you know. Questionable. Yes. This fight should be probably lined a little closer. Actually, what the, what's the line on this on this uh, card? It is uh, plus 140 Ann Helliger, minus 166 Gurigao. 
Yeah, Char- Charlam- Lampos. I don't want to pronounce this guy's name wrong. Gregorio Halampos. Halampos. Uh, yeah, it should be a little tighter. I think, again, I think Gregorio early. I think and Heliger late. But I'm going to pick Gregorio for the win. From a betting perspective, don't know which way I want to go with this one. Could be a pass overall, but I don't know. I got to dig a little deeper into this one. What about you, my brother? I'm with you on this, and I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Um, if there's anything that we fade more than Sarah Lago, guys, it's guys from Canada. And um, <laughs> I'm serious. I, I think the days of GSP are done. I think the talent that they have coming out of there, not named OAM, it's not there. Mike Malak got faded. He lost oh, yeah. me money. He was the next He was the next Canadian hope. He, he's the next Canadian hope. Yeah, Canada dry now. That's what he is from Neil Magny, you know? And... Um, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not very high on Anne Helliger. I, I like Chalampos. I I agree with the early. Not sure I'm going to bet this fight because I don't like debut fighters to bet on. But for pick's sake, Halampos is the play for sure. I, his money line's okay. I just don't know about betting a minus one sixty six on a debut fighter. That's a, it's there's value there, but it's uh, he might lose this fight. Just UFC jitters, a whole bunch of things. Plus late if he can't get him out of there early. So Halampos. Next fight on the prelims, and this is going to be a lightweight fight. We got Tiago Moises going one-on-one with the fight stalker, Mitch Ramirez. Moises, 17-7, and seven, fighting out of Brazil. Helen from Brazil, 28 years old. Mitch Ramirez, 8-1, and one, fighting out of Vegas, 31 years old. I mean, listen, we'll start, I'll start on the Mitch Ramirez side. Uh, crazy backstory. When he was young, got addicted to heroin. Ended up in jail. I think a, a decent stint in jail. Came out, found MMA. It's like, you know, Great sometimes guy. that's better, Great than, story. better than finding Jesus sometimes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he found MMA, turned his life around. Now he's uh, getting an opportunity here. Congratulations. I mean, I'm happy he's in the UFC. I think he's a decent fighter. I think he's got uh, hand, like he's got his hands are heavy, both hands. His overall game plan is to kind of take you down and beat you up. But I think he's got solid takedown defense, uh, solid pressure. He's a solid guy. The problem is, is that he's fighting Moises here. And I think Moises not only is probably the better striker, definitely got the better jiu-jitsu. He's Mitch Ramirez. I mean, he even lost his contender series fight against um Prates, but that was also a weight class up and like on a week's notice yes you know so you, anything to get into the ufc you can't fault the kid for that and i think they're hooking him up here hey man you're in here we're gonna put you we're gonna fall on line you tough because uh moises original appointment was uh was it brad riddell brad riddell brad riddell that's the guy who i thought was gonna retire yeah and i think he kind of did retire and now he's coming back i think moises you know was gonna mop him correct that being said i still think moises mops here I think Moises wins. I think he's the side. Probably by submission. Probably by submission. Probably second round. I think, listen, Mitch, I think he hits hard enough. to pro- If he pressures and hits hard enough, he, he could probably put a little a little fear into Moises. Moises' last two fights, he's lost uh, via KO or TKO. Yeah. I mean, that being said, he, it was to Benoit Saint-Denis and uh, Joel Alvarez. So, I mean. Islam before that. And then Islam before that. Yeah. I'm leaning the Moises side here. Moises, what's the line on this fight? I'm, I'm looking for it. I've been looking for it. I'm not sure where it's at. Oh, it's at um, Moises is a minus 410, which Ooh, I think is nuts. That sounds about right, to be honest, Cons- considering Mitch coming in again yeah. last minute. I, I do think um, there's some value on a dog shot here. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to pick Mitch to to win this fight, but I would love to see his knockout prop at the end of the, at the, end of the week because... If we're being honest, he does have t- decent takedown defense. Um, he hits hard with both hands, and we've just seen Tiago fold with guys that can put volume and put punches together. He and does the, and put the pressure. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, Moises is a good counter puncher, but Mitch does have a decent chin. And this is a lot like the Benoit Saint Denis fight, minus the grappling, but he can get to the grappling. So let me not completely rule out Mitch. I just think Benoit, um, as Dustin Poirier said, and Dustin kind of gave like the the insight on that, that he's a very strong in the grappling, but Dustin said he doesn't hit very hard. So, and I, which means Mitch probably hits harder than Benoit, which is maybe about right. I don't want to overstate, but I've seen Mitch touch dudes and they go out. 
Like it's they're bad knockouts. So I just think with a guy who's um in Tiago who is questionable sometimes with his durability, I think it might not be worth a bad long shot play for the knockout. But Tiago has had this thing where he sends back these guys that he's supposed to beat and looks horrid. Not even horrid. He just wilters to guys that he's not supposed to be. The elite of the elite. So do I think um I think Tiago's gonna win this fight probably by submission. Hundred percent. But if the line looks good enough on a Mitch knockout, because I think that's the only way he wins this fight. I think it's his only path, yeah. I, I think I think I'll take a, a stab at it just because Tiago does fold when he gets, you know, hammered a little bit, you know. So, give me Tiago, but might be a dog shot here. Next fight on the prelims at women's strawweight, we got Corey Poppins, Corey McKenna going one on one with Jacque Jacqueline Almarin. McKenna eight and two overall, fighting out of Wales. 24 years old, one on one with Amarim, seven and one, fighting at Brazil, 28. Wait, yeah, 28 years old. I don't know. I got a little dyslexic there. It's all good. This is this is a fight where I think it's I think it's a good fight for both. I think both women are kind of bullies. More especially Jacqueline. I think she's a bit of a bully. She's gonna have a 10 inch reach advantage here. She does have a little pop. I think she's live early. The problem is I think McKenna is better. I think she's got the better striking, even though McKenna's got the shortest arm reach in the UFC. And she's a builder. I think the later this fight goes, if McKenna could survive that that first wave, I like McKenna deep. This could be like a live bet spot. (laughs) (laughs) This could be a live bet spot, in my opinion. I think if you like the Amarim side, I think she's most live in that first five to seven and a half minutes where she can, you know, try to bully McKenna, get the sub, I'm not too worried about the reach advantage. She don't really, even though she's got pop, she don't really throw out the jab. She kind of swings. Like she uses her striking, which is like, uh, I mean, less than ideal, less than, you know, average to, to get in. McKenna, like I said, I think she's the better striker. I think she's the better wrestler. I am afraid because she has been putting compromising positions against like, uh, Demopolis, who she fought in the Contender Series. I think this is the best jujitsu artist she's fought. Correct. So I think I'm going to I'm gonna put a little stock into Amore. I'm going to put a little more respect on Amore. I think that the sub is a little live. That being said, I think McKenna's the side. I can, I can forgive the Elise. I was tight. I can forgive the Elise Reed L. All she needed to do was wrestle there. But to be like, to not put all the blame on McKenna... Her coaches told her after round one, hey, your striking looks good. And it did look decent, but that was that was that was not the correct way to win that fight. The the way to beat Elise Reed is to take her down and rinse her. <laughs> I mean, Luke Luke Boom Luke Boomy took her down and rinsed her. <laughs> McKenna's a better wrestler, in my opinion. So but I can forgive her. I think McKenna's strategy here, and I hope they the coaches do tell her she has good hands. I think if she keeps it standing, I think she could outbox uh, Jacqueline. And in the later half, I think she can survive the ground. If she's on the top, she could probably work her way to a decision. I'm leaning McKenna, but I think Amarun is live early. But I don't know how to bet this fight. Agreed. Um, I'm with you on everything you said. I think um, Amarim is live early. Her last fight, she fought uh, Montserrat Ruiz, but, you know... you know, she's a girl that should be fighting at 105 if they had a 105 division. She's tiny. Um, I didn't like that fight for Montserrat because I like her. I think she's a scrappy a scrappy girl. She does have some decent skill, um, and she's tough as hell. But I think Jacqueline is a, bi- a bully, a bit of a bully. So I'm with you there. Corey McKenna might be the better wrestler in this match, to be frank. She is, I think. You know, like, there's a lot of reasons to like Corey McKenna in this fight. And I think Jacqueline, if you're going to play her, play sub one. Sub two, because I don't think she's going to knock Corey out. No. Even though she has a 10-inch reach advantage. And I think Corey late, um, this is definitely going to probably be a live bet spot. Because I could see her getting rinsed the first round. And then she's like a plus 500. I think that's a way better line to play someone in in a women's MMA match. 100%. Live bet spot that, and then you're good to go. Corey McKenna's the side. Probably going to get a live bet spot here, though. Next fight on the prelims here, we got at featherweight. Josh Kulibao, Kuya, going one on one with the debuting Danny Silva, El Puma. Kulibao, 11 2 and 1, 
fighting out of Australia, 29 years old. Danny Silva, El Puma, 8 and 1, fighting out of Santa and California, 27 years old. Um, I think this is going to be a good fight, a good back and forth, primarily stand up fight, striker versus striker. I know a lot of people are not too high on Kulabao. I was, I wasn't initially high on Kulabao. He kind of just, he's kind of just like an awkward dude. Comes off awkward. You can tell he used to be like a fat dude <laughs> that lost a lot of weight. I mean, listen, shout out to, you know, shout out to the fat boys. You know and I'm saying <laughs> we out here holding it down. <laughs> um, I think Kulabao is more of the uh, keep you at distance, poke you up. He's got power in his hand. Just kind of striker. <laughs> You got to chill, bro. <laughs> you on the road today. Poke you up. Hey, hey yo. <laughs> My bad. Then we got Danny Silver here, who, I mean, in this contender series fight, I mean, you could, this man's not afraid of bang. He threw volume. He's got the cardio. I don't I don't know how to feel about this fight because I think Huli Bao, I think uh, the UFC is kind of, I mean, listen, they matched him. He, they, he debuted against Jalen Turner. Tough fight. Off a weight class. He got rinsed. Body shots, by the way. Just keep that in mind. His next fight was against Jordan. I mean, back to back fights, those That's are pretty tough. those are pretty big names. Ended up that fight ended up in a draw. Cooley Bao was able to knock down Jordan in that fight too. Again, I think he's got power in his hands. Underrated power. He's a little low volume. You can tell he can grapple or he wants to grapple. The problem is he's like 0 for 13 in his overall attempts. He hasn't taken anybody down, but he will cage push you. He's an opportunistic finisher. I think he's a black belt. I think Koulibaly's the side. And the reason why I think Koulibaly's the side, I think he's got more, a little more tools in the tool shed. I am worried about Danny Silva kind of walking him down because he can take a beating and he could keep just walking forward. I think the pressure is going to be a big problem for Koulibaly and the volume is probably going to be on the Danny Silva side. Silva can be taken down and that's kind of where he's weak at. When I was watching the regional stuff, the pro again, but again, the problem is, is Koulibao hasn't been able to take down anybody yet. Silva is going to be the bigger guy, in my opinion. Uh, he's got two inches. He's kind of built big. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen, just AO this whole segment. Um, I'm afraid the bang, everything. Koulibao <laughs> is weak to the body as well. I've noticed anytime he's been in very compromised positions where he's been in danger in a fight, it's been to body shots. Body shots. And Silva can work the body. Pause. <laughs> I'm going to pick Koulibaly here. I wouldn't be surprised if Danny Silva was able to get in and then work the body and, and get him out of there either. I, I'm going to lean this fight probably goes the distance, but it's going to be a back and forth banger in my opinion. <laughs> I'm leaning Koulibaly. Don't know from a betting side how I'm going to work this fight. What are the odds on this? Uh, Kula Bao's a minus 192. Danny Silva's plus 160. I think that's about right. That sounds about right. Kula Bao, again, I, he's just, a, I, I, I've been underestimating him. I think, he's got, I think he's got a higher IQ than I want to give him respect for. I think he's got the jujitsu upside. He will attempt the grappling. Uh, and he's got decent, like, he, he's got decent weapons. Because right? he's got good leg kicks as well. Silva's just a... Punching bag. Kind of, I don't want to say a punching bag, but he's a walk forward and beat your ass up kind of fighter. So he's low key a punching bag. Who can be taken down, but we'll see. Who knows? I'm leaning Cooley Bow here. What about you? I'm with you on Cooley Bow, and I think it's because he has the better skills. That's exactly why I'm picking him um, alongside you. I think he is a sniper at range. I think he makes good, you know, weapon selections with, you know, in his fights. Yeah, he lost to Jalen Turner. Jalen Turner is a top 10 lightweight. Um, well, yeah, a lightweight. He's fighting at 45, this guy, so and, it's upper weight class. And it's not even just lightweight, because Jalen Turner's at a, a big lightweight. He's a welterweight. He's a welterweight. Yeah. You know, and um, he lost, he, he hurt um, Charles Jordan, which is not easy to do. Charles is very slick striker, so the fact that he dropped him, I like Kulabao here, and I think Kulabao, I don't know how I'm going to bet it, because I don't like this line at minus 192, but what I will say is I want to see if Danny Silva is live to get knocked out or subbed here, which I think are both both are likely because you can take Silva down. Um, yeah, I like I like Kula for all the reasons stated previously. Next fight on the prelims at flyweight, we have the Jamaican sensation Ode Osborne going one on one with the pasta Rafael Filho or Filho. <laughs> Uh, the Jamaican sensation is 12 and 6, fighting out of Milwaukee, 32 years old. Filho. 
15 and three, fighting out of Brazil, 30 years old. I like, uh, I'm just going to be straight. I like the Fiojo side. I like this line too. It's, it's unfortunate because I think Ode Osborne is solid. I think he's got good striking. I think he's got very fast hands. I think he's probably going to be the better striker in this matchup. The problem is, is twofold. I think is he's got good solid takedown defense, but like that's like the initial first, the first line of defense, that first line of defense. But I mean, Fil- Filio's a he's a bad boy, man. He's a dog, bro. And like Ode doesn't make good decisions to be ca- frank. Kind of gets tired as the fight goes on. I mean, he almost lost to Vergara. When he he kind of fights these guys, where if you're good in a particular area, he's probably gonna lose in that particular area. He fought uh, Amabayev. Amabayev is good at subs. Lost to him by sub. Tyson Nam, good at striking. Lost to him at striking. The Charles Johnson thing. I think Charles Johnson is turning out to be a little bit. Um, I don't want to say overrated, but I did pump him hard, and then he kind of really hasn't panned out in the no. UFC. That was a close fight because Charles Johnson's kind of just like he don't really stick out anywhere. So, you know, if you're if you're a decision fighter, you're gonna go to that decision. He lost to Manel Cap. I mean, but Cap's a god. Cap's a beast, yeah. And then he got subbed by Brian uh, Kelleher, and that's what Brian Kelleher does. So it's like I like Filho here. I think Filho wins by sub. Yes, I'm gonna say round two. I agree. Um, I think again, I think Ode's live for knockout because Fijo does leave himself out there. And Fijo is another one of these guys that's kind of weak to the body, but you know, they, people don't want to talk about that. That's fine. I think Fijo's the side here. I think he's just better overall. I think his jiu jitsu is just next level. It's filthy. I think he gets the sub here, probably round two. I like fight, probably doesn't go to distance. I like the unders on this fight. I haven't figured out a way I want to attack it just yet. But that's the way I'm feeling about this fight overall. I'm with you for all the points you listed. I like um, I like Ode too. Um, I I don't want to shit on the dude too much. I mean, he's a nice guy. He's got a podcast called Wang Guan. Yeah, I, and I, it's actually pretty good. Great guy, you know. Great guy, great personality. I think he was a school teacher at one yeah. point too. Like he's he's a good story. I, I just think uh, Filio has more ways to win. Um, Filio is a better grappler. Filio has underrated power in his hands. Hundred percent underrated. Like he cracks. And especially as the fight dwells on, he'll get you in these scrambles and get you in awkward positions. Ode, um, unfortunately, I just feel like you, like you said, I feel like he just winds up finding himself in these bad positions with these guys in their strengths. And like he's a good front runner, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he's coming out the gate, he's really good. Correct. You know, but as that if that fight gets a little extended, if he can't find his way, if he can't clip you early, it it kind of it kind of goes array for him. You know what I'm saying? How's his volume, by the way? I think he's got decent volume. If, like in a stand-up, stri- like in a striking matchup, I think against Charles Johnson, he put up decent volume. Yeah, he put he, up decent volume against him. Yeah, I think I think Filio is just um, he just has way more ways to win. I think if he even gets this fight even close to the floor, I think he's gonna drown him. Yes, I mean the fact that he got Makayev in a knee bar, and I know Makayev is not like the brightest fighter. I'm a I think he's a little overrated, but I mean, listen, I can't wait to fade him against the right guy. Alex Perez, that fight showed a lot. Yeah. And, and I, I wasn't high on him before that, but like, you know, yeah, this guy's supposed to be the next guy fighting Pantoja. I mean, good Pant- luck. Pantoja's going to, Pantoja's going to milk that boy. Like he's like one of his cows on his farm in Brazil, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be fucking bad. Sweet milk. Yeah. Sweet milk. You know, like it's going to be bad. I, I, I like, um, I like Filio here, man. I just think he has way more, way more ways to win. I like this money line too. At 155, he might be one of the bets I play. That's actually sure. pretty good. Yeah. That's, I think it's, that's a good straight I bet. I think it's very playable. And that line has come down because I kind of, I thought I seen him like around 180. Yeah. And that was like, okay, I might parlay that money line. But at 155, that's probably a decent that's straight. That's a D straight. Yeah. Usually we try to stay at 150 on this podcast. Like every dollar, 50 cents, you get a dollar back. I think that's, that's reasonable. We try not to go over that. So I like that on the money line particularly. So I think I'm going to play him there and I'm going to play his subs round two, round three. Or maybe inside the distance <clears> too because of the power. Yeah. You know? He can knock him out. Ode has been knocked out. Like mm-hmm. it's, 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 I think Ode probably cuts a lot of weight to make this weight class. I too. think he does because he's big for this weight he's class. He's huge. You know, so like that compromises your chin. So I, I think ITD is live here too. I, this might be, this is prob- most likely going to be one of the, the fights we bet on. If you want to play it safer, money line. Just, I mean, no, even safer than that. Because, again, I think Ode's live early. You know, the unders. That's or it. Or fight doesn't go. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Next fight, 
in the women's bantamweight division. Speaking of fights, probably not going the distance. <laughs> we got Josie Ann Nunes. Josie going one on one with Chelsea Chandler. Nunes, 10 and 1, fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 30 years old. Chandler, fighting out of Stockton, 5 and 2 overall, 33 years old. This fight is a fight that I don't think is going to go to distance. This is a fight where Nunes, listen, she's got, she'll Superman punch, like she's 5'2. <laughs> she's built like a female Latifi, no yeah. neck. Like a, she's built like a snowman, like head, body. <laughs> Long, like she got abnormally large arms for her abnormally short body. It, they, she's a weird build. They chose the longest tree branches for this snowman. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying to put on the sides and shit, you know. But she's got mitts. <laughs> she's got mitts. Her she only cracks. loss was to Leah Santos, and that was like her second fight ever. No shame in that. I I can't find footage in that fight. I tried to. It's probably still out there. I I would, if I had to suspect, she probably lost by grappling in that fight. Yeah. Leah Santos. Underrated. Can't believe the UFC let her go. I don't know what happened. I don't yeah, know, but she's gonna be a monster in the PFL. Yeah, she's a monster. I think so. Joe Nunes is competent. I mean, she's got three fights in the UFC. In my opinion, she's bums. fought a whole bunch of bums. Pasquale was able to take her down. Horrible fight. Uh, Bam Malecki. Horrible. Fight. Hasn't fought since. And uh, Zarafim. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that was probably her toughest fight. Some argue Zerafim might have even won that fight. The fact that that fight was even close shows how bad Zerafim is. Yes. Chelsea Chandler. I love everything about this girl. I, I like her. Listen, I know she's a little green. She's probably a little rough around the edges. One first things first, does she make the weight? Both these girls used to fight at featherweight. I think, I think they both do, but this fight might not even take place because they both might miss weight. One of them might miss weight. Could get canceled via miss weight miss. <laughs> but if they do both make weight, and I and I got a feeling they both will. I mean, I think they've had ample time. Hopefully they've been on the right nutritional diet and doing their thing. Chelsea, she she's a dog. I mean, again, fighting out of that stock, the the was the Nick Diaz camp, the <laughs> Diaz boys. She's a dog. She's got an attitude, she's got an edge. I think she's the better striker. In terms of technique, I agree. I think if she can get this fight to the ground, I think she can beat her. I think she could beat Nunez up. Bad. She's a tough girl on the ground. Mean, vicious. But again, maybe not the the highest IQ, not the best defense standing. And I think that's why Nunez is hell alive, because even though Nunez throws Superman punches and overhand lefts, and that's all she does, she does them really good. This fight doesn't go to distance. I'm leaning Chandler here. She's going to be the bigger girl. I'm clearly the bigger girl. Which, again, Nunez, all she's fought is big-ass girls. But this one's got grappling. This one's probably lights out on the bottom. And she's tough. And she's got some power. I'm just afraid of her defense and her chin. I'm leaning Chandler here for the win. I think this fight doesn't go. That's probably the safe way to play it. Violence. Violence. And a, and this is a low-level fight, but this is actually a low-level fight I'm kind of excited for. <laughs> I don't know why. I just I just want to see I just want to see chaos in this fucking fight. And I think chaos is gonna happen. People gonna bleed, it's gonna get cut open, and somebody might die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Violence is the answer in this fight, and um for a lot of reasons. All your points are correct. The ones I will add on, I think Josiah Nunez has the better punt the hand speed. Yes. I think she has better hand speed. It's a great fight, but I do like Chandler's path to victory here. I think this girl is crazy tough. She is getting memed a lot because she ran away from Norma Dumont after catching a good shot. <laughs> but she was able to get Dumont down in the fight. Yeah, and, and, early. And, and yeah. I think Dumont is underrated, if I'm being frank with you. Dumont, I think she has decent skill. Dumont is not only underrated, but I think she's better than anybody Nunez is fight By far. Fought. By far. And I think... By far. I think Dumont is like she's a, she could be a rank fighter in in thirty five if she's not already a rank fighter. She, I, I'm not sure, she needs, but she needs she's to make good. the weight. She is. She, it's just it's tough weight cut for because she's a thicker girl. So yeah. I think um yeah I, I like Chandler here and I like Chandler because even if she can't get Josiah to the floor, Josie N rather, um I think she can control her against the cage, 
and just put damage on her. You know, and I, I just Nunez hasn't shown the best takedown defense. No, I'm again Ramona Pascal, bro. Chandler Chandler's good at creating scrambles and getting you to the floor. She's good at imp- imposing her will. Um, she could get knocked down this fight, but you want 100%. but you want the real. Like she's gonna be the bigger girl. She's gonna probably be. She's a tough girl, just like Josiah, and she's gonna be Josie Ann. She's gonna be uh, probably the only girl that's gotten in there with her that she's gonna taste her power. And she's not going to be afraid of her. She's just going to try to walk through it, you know. So, I just don't think Nunez has fought anybody that's you know good at this level since she's been in the UFC. And I think Chandler has a lot of upside to get it done in this fight. She has a clear path to victory because Nunez has no takedown defense. Like it's horrid. So I like Chandler as a dog shot here. And um, hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. One hundred percent. Next fight on the prelims, and it's currently constituted the prelim main event. At lightweight, we got the returning beast boy, Mike Davis, going one-on-one with the lethal Natan Levy. There's only one lethal, J. Lethal. J- <laughs> nah. <laughs> beast boy, 10-2, and two, fighting out of Orlando, Florida, 31 years old. Natan Levy, fighting out of Las Vegas, hailing from Israel, 32 years old, 8-1 and one overall. Uh, I think this is Mike Davis all day. I know Mike Davis hasn't fought in a long time. I know he's been kind of like nursing injuries. I think he had to get like a shoulder surgery or something like that. And But like, I just think Mike Davis is better everywhere. Kind of everywhere. I think he's the better grappler. I think he's the better striker by far. I, I Listen, Natan Levy, he's he started off as a striker, but in the UFC, he just likes to go to this grappling thing. And I get it. But the problem with his grappling is he does nothing with it. He's gotten multiple takedowns in fights that he's lost. Yeah. Because he's he just gets takedowns and there's no kind of ground and pound. There's no kind of submission attempts. He's what we call a hugger, ladies and gentlemen. And for somebody named Lethal, no knockouts. Not so lethal. I think Mike Davis kind of just Mike Davis kind of just does his thing here. Mike Davis does gas, but Mike Davis does gas only because of the amount of volume he puts out. Levy gases. After one round, just because I think he's super big for this division. He carries a lot of muscle. He probably should be fighting a weight class up. I, I just like, I, I like Beast Boy here. I like Beast Boy here. I mean, if you haven't seen his Mason Jones fight, banger. His contender series fight at featherweight against Sadiq Yusuf, banger. This guy just has banger fights. I like his striking. I think he could probably get the knockout here because Natan Levy... Has been rocked by Mike Brien, out of all people, who's not even in the UFC anymore. I think a lot of uh, Levy's opponents are not even in the UFC anymore. Bottom of the barrel, man. Yeah. Bottom of the barrel. This is a huge step up, in my opinion, for Levy. I think I think Beast Boy probably... I mean, who knows? Maybe Davis probably takes his time because it's been a while. He hasn't been in a fight in a while. So it, there's a decision possibility, but... I'm going to lean inside the distance for Mike Davis. I think he could get it done however he wants. And, I mean, from a betting perspective, I mean, what's the money line here? It's probably just too wide. Minus four, four plus, 425. Uh, yeah, so the money line, even from a parlay perspective, is not even that good. Uh, I'd look at inside the distance. I mean, again, I think Levy has got good kicks. I think he hits hard. He just... I don't. I think. I. I just think he's. This is a mismatch, in my opinion. That's. I, that's all I really got. I'll make this a lot quicker than you. Um, Mike Davis, ITD, and I, I think so because it's. It's. Natal Levy has fought bums. To be frank with you, a lot of bad fighters at this level. Mike Davis, the only thing that kills him is inactivity. And the last fight he had was against Borishev, and he had his moments on the feet against a guy that I have highly regarded as a very good striker. And then showed IQ by taking Borishev taking him down, down because Borishev was having more moments on the feet against him. But Mike Davis is no joke. Big for the weight class, can wrestle, can strike, a lot of volume. Um, just inactivity, the only thing that kills him. But I will not get around to betting minus 425 on a guy that's this inactive, plus cuts that much weight because he may or may not be weak to the body. But I will not be betting plus 330 on Netan Levy. I, I do not have any faith in this guy. Um, I think he's bottom He's of a barrel. nice guy, but you yeah, know. Bottom of the barrel. Shredded. Yeah. Shredded. Looks good. Looks good. Just not so lethal, man. So Mike Davis, I think ITD. All right, to kick off the main card at middleweight, we got GM3, Gerald Mearshart, going one-on-one with Bam Bam, not Tuivasa, but Brian Barbarena. 
Barbarena, 18 and 11, fighting out of Glendale, Arizona, 34 years old. Going one on one with GM3, Gerald Mearshart, 35 and 17, fighting out of Milwaukee, 36 years old. Listen, I, I think GM3 is the side here. I don't like that he's minus two, two, what is he? Two what? Minus two, uh, two at 38. That's a, that's big for a guy who's 40 for, I mean, for a guy who looks like he fights like he's 40, he has been slowing down. This is a guy where Mearshart, I mean, he doesn't have the greatest like takedown offense. If I'm being honest, he's kind of like, I, his last couple fights was club and sub. He can get the takedown. He doesn't really proactively go for it. I think he's going to be the guy who hits harder out of the two. I think Barbarena probably has the faster hands, but I think Barbarena should not be in this weight class. I think he's just too small. I don't think he hits hard enough. I think Barbarena, even though he's the younger guy, his body is probably older by my, he's just got, he's taking a lot of damage. Uh, Mir, uh, Mahmed Miradov, I think that was the guy who just fought Let last, was able to take him down fucking 14 times. Let me down. He should have finished this guy, man. Should have finished him. Lost on that fucking bet. Jesus. I don't know how GM3 gets the takedown, but if if this gets on the ground, Barbarena, most of his losses are via sub. It's, I'm going to lean GM3. ITD. Maybe ITD. But this is one of those spots where it's like, man, Barbarena could probably pull this out only because I think he's got the faster hands. And again, Mearshart, again, not the greatest takedown artist. He's probably going to try to stand with him for most of the time. And if that happens, I can see Barbarena eking out a uh, fucking decision win here, too. I think this fight should be lined closer. I think GM3 is the side here. But as much as I don't agree with him being in this weight class, I think this is uh, more, one of the more winnable fights for him, in my opinion. It's close. I'm leaning I'm leaning GM3, but I'm not too confident on either side, if I'm being completely honest. I'm going to I'm going to make this a lot quicker than you. Bam bam. Horrible fighter. <laughs> um, he's terrible. I think he's terrible even at 170. Um, I don't think he has faster hands just cuz he's a lighter guy. He don't have faster hands because he's the more technical puncher. I don't think he's going to be able to hurt GM3. He, he might honest. he might because he's got a bad chin, but if you want the real what I saw if what gave me a little hope to be a little more confident in this pick is that GM3 looked really good with his boxing last fight against Petrosky and he was tuning up Petrosky a little bit. Yeah. Um Petrosky is just a young bull. Now GM3 is fighting a guy who's like an old bull but old in MMA years and can take a shot just as well as he can. Murado should have finished him the last fight. I think GM3 is going to finish him in this fight. Um, that's probably going to be the bet, to be frank. Um, but we'll see as I get closer to the fight night. I want to see how Barbarina looks. I want to see how he's talking, especially since that, that R word, the retirement word, has been coming out of his mouth a lot. Um, but I think this is a very winnable fight for both men. But I think it's more, much more winnable for GM3 because GM3 could hurt him on the feet and or sub him, in my opinion. Barbarina ain't subbing GM3. That ain't happening. Oh, hell no. And Barbarina, bad fight IQ and does wing his punches a little bit. GM3 does throw punches a little bit better down the pipe, in my opinion. Just based off the Petrosky footage, who is a much more vicious puncher. So, I like GM3. Next fight on the prelims. It's a run back. A rematch. At women's Bantamweight. On the main card, actually. Oh, I said prelims? Yep. Main card. We got Penny Kianzat. Banzai. Going one-on-one -on -one with Macy Chason. Kianzat. 16 and 7, hailing from Sweden, fighting out of Denmark, 32 years old. Macy Chason, 8 and 3, fighting out of Dallas, Texas, 32 years old. Uh, their first fight was like an ultimate fighter finale. I think Chason was able to get the sub eventually. I think it was like late round one, early round two. I don't recall too fondly, but Chason won that fight. Uh, ever since then, I think Chason. Has uh, I think she's gotten better, if I'm being honest. Uh, Chase on, I mean, I think I think she's the side here. But Kianzat, I think, is the better striker. I think Kianzat, uh, I mean, it wasn't a good look in her last fight against Caitlin Vieira. Caitlin was able to hold her down. Like, whenever Caitlin got her down, that was the end of the round. And I kind of bet Kianzat there, stupidly, thinking that, you know, she was going to be able to, like, you know, at least stuff one or two takedowns, but nothing. I think Chase on, she's a good distance striker. She's not, if, if but if Kianza's able to get in, I think could beat her up a little bit. Chase on 
has showed, especially in her last fight, a little bit of an evolution in her game where she was able to take down Norma Dumont like six times. Yep. I, actually, that wasn't her last fight. That was the second to last fight. Her last fight was against Aldana, which I think she was winning, arguably. Until and, she got liver kick. Until she got that weird liver kick upshot. And I think that has to, a lot to do with the weight cut. This is another fight where Chase on might miss weight. She's missed weight at featherweight. So to cut back down to 135, which she has made before, could be a little tough. But again, this is another fight where they both had a heads up. Kianta, I'm not worried about making the weight. Chase on, I'm a little bit on the fence. Chase on, I think will take uh, Kianta down. But she doesn't have like the cleanest, like uh, I guess, control game. No. She's a little a little loose on the ground. And that's why I mean Dumont was able to get up several times. That's why Aldana was able to get up. I think Kianza can get up here. It's not like the Caitlin Vieira fight. Caitlin's just a big, tight grappler. Grappler. She's very good. And Panny has shown the ability to get up at times. Like and work good against the fence. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I can see a lot of cage pushing in this fight as well. With the clinch. And if you're asking me who I think is better in the clinch and the striking. It's Panny. Yes. Panny, for a lot of reasons, is 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 better at the, range and, and in close. The closer she is to Chie San, the better. Yeah. I'm going to... I got a, I got a little bit of a wild theory here. I think this fight ends in sub. I, th- I know Chie San subbed her the first time. Kianzat tried subbing her in that first fight. I think Kianzat... There's going to be opportunities for Kianzat to get a sub here. Mm-hmm. As, as crazy as that sounds. Kianzat doesn't have the power... To really keep Chase on from getting in, but I think since the since they're friends, I don't think they want to really beat each other up. I think fight ends in sub is probably a good look for this fight or decision. It probably goes to decision most likely, but I'm gonna lean Chase on here for the win. This is another spot where, um, again, last week I I bet Morose, even though I did say that the retiring. Um, Joanne. Joanne Wood was live. I, I like a like a dummy. I didn't go that way, and she whooped her ass apparently from pillar to post. This is another fight where I think Kianza wants to get that lick back. So I think Kianza. I, I, in my opinion, I don't have like uh, any kind of like um, substantial kind of evidence I can give you here, but just like Wood, she wanted to get that lick back. Pause. I think Kianza wants to get that lick back. I think Kianza's a little bit live here. At plus 190 in women's MMA, it's, yeah. it's not improbable. That's what I'm saying. Chi- Chi- Chiesa's the side here. I think ends and sub is a sharp look, in my opinion. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't hate the play on Kianza. Uh, this fight probably goes the distance. And just side note, before I hand it off to you, I want to give Chase on some, uh, some, some respect. Did you know that she got shot? <laughs> this is like before she got into uh, the UFC, but she has a bullet hole. She survived. She oh, she got street cred, <laughs> so that's that's plus five street knowledge <laughs> off the bat. She's a tough girl, and I think she's the better fighter. But this fight's gonna this fight's gonna probably look a little weird. That's all I really got for this one. Yeah, agreed. I I'm, I'm taking her. I might take her as a live dog. Um, and I, 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 she's a live dog in this card. Um, I might take a shot on her, but I'm not sure. Like I said, I think uh, you pretty much covered everything. Um, this fight, I, I don't have a ton of interest in betting, so I think we could just move on, to be frank. Because um, <laughs> I just I just stay away from like these lower level women's MMA fights, to be frank, because they're they're fucking dangerous, to be frank. But to be uh, frank, yeah, to be frank, yeah, it's a women's MMA fight, but I keep saying Frank. Um, <laughs> Well, Frankie could be a girl's name. It could be. Could be. So, uh, but I, I, I like um, I like on via decision here. Decision or sub, but it's who a, knows? It's a weird fight. Who knows? Move on. <laughs> Next fight, men's featherweight, which, and this is a fight where I think it's probably going to be a possible fight of the night. It's definitely the most exciting fight that, the most, the most, the fight that I'm most excited to watch. Christian Rodriguez, C-Rod, going one-on-one with the Midwest chopper, <laughs> Isaac Dolgarian. It's a great name. It is that's that's a hard name. Uh Rodriguez, 10 and 1, fighting out of Milwaukee, 26 years old. Dolgarian, perfect. 6 and 0, fighting out of Kansas, 27 years old. Christian Rodriguez here, the prospect killer, as uh people are unofficially naming him. He's good. I think he's a very mature and patient fighter for his age. Good prospect. 
they call him the prospect killer. The Ro- the Ro- the Raul Rosas fight that he had faded that boy. I mean, my brother here was on it. He was calling it since day one. Raul's a fraud. I don't want to say he's a fraud. I just think he's early. He's young. He still needs to. I mean, he's the youngest guy in the UFC. I think he needs to develop his striking. Fraud. Now, when he fought <laughs> Simon, I thought Simon is a little bit overhyped, in my opinion. I don't think Simon is that good. I picked C Rod against Simon there. Was able to rinse him. Now, unfortunately, the the wins are a little tainted because C Rod misses weight in both those fights. <clears throat> this is the third time C Rod has missed weight in Bantam weight. As a punishment, he's got to move back up to featherweight to fight uh, Dolgarian, who in his debut fight against Francis Marshall, rinsed. Dolgarian, according to DC, excellent wrestler. I listen to DC when DC talks about wrestling. That's all he's good at talking about. Like, <laughs> I'll say it. I don't give a shit. He's terrible on commentary. Dolgarian has never been out the first round. Dolgarian, is, he's kind of easy to read. His strategy is to literally take you down and fuck you up by any means necessary. He's vicious on the ground. I think in two of his wins, he showed off a little bit of his uh, submission acumen. I don't know if I'm even saying that right. Acumen. Acumen. He's good. You can tell this kid is very good. Now, the questions on his side is, does he have the cardio? He's never been out the first round. C-Rod has fought at featherweight uh, in his debut fight against uh, Pierce. That fight went to the decision. Pierce was able to control him for the most part. I think that's C-Rod's only L. It is. C-Rod's only L. Can Dolgarin repeat that? I'm going to lean yes. I'm going to lean for a guy who's highly touted in his wrestling. I'm going to... The question is whether he has the cardio. I'm going to lean yes. I don't have any proof about that. We're going to see. He wasn't even breathing hard after smash and fire, Marshall. He wasn't. He ran up. He ran all over the cage. He looked almost good. Like a backflip of him, correct? So. He just looks very good. I think this is going to be a tough fight for C. Rod. I think this fight probably does get out the first round, though. Uh, we're going to learn a lot about both individuals. C. Rod, as much as I like him, I, he's hard to hold down. He's hard to pin down. Does get taken down, though. He does kind of leave people in fights, though. Correct. I think he could have finished Raul Rosas. I think he could have finished Simon. And he does look for the finishes. But he's not super aggressive with it. The Midwest Chopper is trying to kill you. Like he he does he wants you in and out. Great fight. I'm gonna lean Dolgarian. I know it sounds crazy because again, there's not that much footage of him outside of his six first round KOs. Well, not just KOs, but just inside the distance. He, he puts people out. I I I am tempted on the C Rod side, but I don't know. I just it, this is one of those gut feeling kind of fights. I don't blame anybody taking that C-Rod plus money. He's very good. But C-Rod, if he's, especially if he's not going to try to finish Dolgarian and he's going to keep him in, I, I like Dolgarian to do what he's got to do. Probably win by decision. This might be a, a, a fight that goes the distance. But I just like the Dolgarian side overall. What, what do you got for me? I'm with you on Dolgarian. I think Dolgarian's a better wrestler. I think C-Rod does have the tendency to be taken down. And if he got taken down by bum-ass Raul Ra- 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 Rosas, <laughs> he's going to get taken down by Dolgarian, in my opinion. I think Dolgarian's a far better wrestler. I wouldn't say he's bum-ass. He's a bum-ass, yeah, bro. But he, I mean, no, he's Do- 18, Do- Do- but the way they suck him off, it's like, bro, like they might as well just pull his pants down and do what they got to do. <laughs> like, it, it just, it's just nuts. But listen, I get it. The glazing's crazy. Oh, glaze. Glaze, but- glaze donuts, glaze, you know. Glaze hot dogs, well, however glazing you like it, he the UFC gives to Raul Rosas. Dog Dolgarian is gonna be like I think hundred percent has better takedowns. Yeah, he's just way better. Yeah, and it, I just think he's gonna be able to win this fight. He might stop Christian, which is crazy to say because I think Christian's durable. I think Christian never panics. No, but it, I don't know. I don't know. How, I don't know how to bet fight. this fight. Yeah. I, I don't know how to bet it because and I, the money line. His money line's at minus 198. I might play that straight. But I feel like for a guy that's unproven, it's a little dangerous. I like the unders here. But I, I, I'm, I don't, under two and a half, it's a minus 120. I don't think this fight's going to go the distance. But I don't know. Like, I, I want to do a little more before I commit to this. So Yeah, I'm on the fence about whether it goes or it doesn't go. I just like Dolgarian. And, and that's where I'm at. Next fight on the main card and as currently constituted the featured bout. I mean, I don't know why, but... 
It is Kennedy and Jack Wu, the African savage, going on one-on-one with, I didn't even know he's still in the UFC, Ovin St. Pru, OSP, the African savage, 12-4, and four, fighting out of Nigeria, actually fighting out of Dallas, hailing from Nigeria, 31 years old, fighting OSP, fighting out of Knoxville, Tennessee, hailing from Haiti, 40 years old, 26 and 17 overall. Listen, this is this should this is a and Jack Wu layup, I think. Yeah. The most scariest part of this fight is gonna be in the first round because Njek Wu is kind of one of those guys that kind of needs to build into it. He's Chenny too. reads. Chenny. I think he's the most vulnerable in the first round because he's again he's trying to get his reads and trying to figure out how he wants to approach the fight. And a little bit chinny. So but OSP is just past his prime. I think po- OSP probably most live in the first round because that's going to be the most freshest he's going to be in the fight. I like Njekwu here, probably by second round KO. If he doesn't get it done here, big question marks. They're trying to feature Njekwu here. I think he pulls through with it. Second round KO. OSP is washed. Yeah, OSP is terrible. Um, and, and at this point in his career, I think he's just fighting for paychecks. So this is an easy... We're not going to waste too much time on this. This is... I just think OSP is... Very sharp worn. It's alarmingly sharp worn at this point. He's been knocked out so many times. Like, I don't even know how this fight got sanctioned. I don't know if he should get sanctioned after this fight, but he's probably going to get cut from the UFC after this fight. Probably. Um, and Jack will, however he wants, probably by second round knockout. I agree with you there. So we could move on from this fight. I tell you what, though, if the line had, if, the, if we had caught the line at minus, I think it opened up at minus 180 on DraftKings, I would have, I would have, I would have thrown two units on it. What's that line right now? Minus uh, 675. <laughs> I was looking at this fight when they first announced it, but I, wow. I did not keep up with the line. But it's all good. Listen, I'm not going to put any high number on Injekwu with that shit. I'm sorry. Against, at 205, anything could happen. So Injekwu, though, by however he wants. At welterweight, co-main event, Brian Battle. Pooh Bear. Actually, I think he's Brian the Butcher now. I think this is his new nickname. So he's turning against, up bears now. Well, he's not a bear no more. He's a grizzly bear. He's a big boy. He's the butcher. <laughs> Going one on one with the last ninja, Angelusa. Mm-hmm. Battle 10 and 2, fighting out of Charlotte, North Carolina, 29 years old. Angelusa 10 and 3, fighting out of Switzerland, 29 years old. Good fight. This is a fight where, I mean, I, when they first listed it as the co main event, I was kind of like, you know, a little skeptical. But, I mean, these are two guys who are kind of on the cusp of like, you know, hey, we're going to give you some ranked fighters after this, I think. Right. So they just want to see who's who, who's got what. Brian Battle, I was not high on this guy initially. I'm happy to eat my words on the guy. I think he's improved every fight. I think he's got knockout power. I think uh, his striking has gotten better. I think he's a little crafty on the ground. I think he's live for submission. I think if anybody's live for a finish, I think it's more Battle than Lusa. But Lusa's a dog. I like Lusa a lot. Lusa, cardio. Good chin. Good shin, volume, volume, volume. This man throws so much. And good wrestling. And not afraid to mix in the wrestling, 100%. I think this fight's going to be a very good fight. I'm leaning the battle side here only because I'm just tired of underestimating this kid. He improves every time I see him. I think fight ends in sub is probably interesting here. Angelusa not afraid to go for subs. Had Jack Della in a deep sub. I think he had uh uh what's that uh what's that guy's name that the opponent that they both have in common. Um, he's not he's not even the Pierce. Um, what he's not even the UFC anymore. It's not Pierce. It's um. Uh, oh man, I don't remember his name. He's a bum. He's a, he's he's that guy that hangs around. Dustin AJ Fletcher. Fletcher. Fuck that guy. AJ man. Fletcher. Uh, Fade him too. I think he I think he almost had him in a deep sub as well. Angelusa will go for the sub. Angelusa rocked the shit out of AJ Fletcher. Brian Battle was able to finish him. I think battles aside here, I think fight ends in sub is probably good. I think Brian Battle by sub is probably also good. But man, I wouldn't be surprised if Angelusa with his volume, his overall durability, and the way he could just mix in all aspects of like MMA. I think he's. I think this is a good fight. And if you want to take that dog shot on Angelusa, not terribly mad at it either. But me personally, I'm. I think I'm leaning Brian Battle here. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, but I, I'm not mad at a dog shot at Lusa. Not at all. 
I think this guy is um, horribly over underrated. Yep. I think he took some of Jack Della's best shots, the yes. guy who just knocked out Gilbert Burns, and he just kept coming forward. And I do think that um, him training with Kamar Usman and that team is like helping him out with his fight IQ and his fight decisions. Um, doesn't gas, always in shape, built like a tank, can wrestle. Brian does have one susceptibility to being taken down a lot. He does get taken down a lot, but he's very good off his back, which is why I'm kind of giving him the benefit of the doubt in this fight. But I tell you what, if this line gets a little more disrespect on Angelusa. It's at plus 150 right now. I'll take it at like plus 175. I'll take a shot on Ange for sure. Um, but I like Brian by submission or decision here. I think that's how I would play him. But um, yeah, that's how I got it. Brian's the lean. Ange might be the, the, the bet. Main event. Heavyweight. Big mini men bumping meat. You've been crazy this whole podcast. Bam, bam. <laughs> Tied to Ivasa going one-on-one with Tybur. Marcin Tybura. I don't know why, what accent that was, but tied to Uvasa. It's like you were saying it from a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> from the Himalayas and shit. <laughs> I don't know where is he? He's from Poland. 15 and 6 overall for the Australian tied to Uvasa, 31 years old. The Polish, Tybura, 24 and 18. Fighting out of Poland, 38 years old. Uh, I think this is probably a get right spot for Ty here. Agreed. I don't know. I think the narrative behind Ty is more outside the cage. I mean, look, this fight was supposed to happen earlier. He ended up getting uh, hurting his knee, getting meniscus surgery. Apparently, he's still walking around with the knee sleeve, which kind of worries me a little bit. Mentally, don't know where he's at. I think he's lost two or three in a row. But against good guys. I, again, against really good. They're like the top of the top, man. You know what I'm saying? Rock Cyril gone in one of those fights. Bad. In the second round. Uh, I think Ty, I think, again, this is a get right spot for Ty. Marcin is a, a bit live, especially if this fight gets extended. He does have the wrestling, the grappling upside. And I think he's a little more technical than people want to give him credit for. I just think he doesn't have the, the hands to really keep Ty off. He's more of a punches and bunches kind of guy. He doesn't really have like KO, KO ability. Like he, also does, does. he also doesn't go to the wrestling too much. He doesn't go to as it much too much. As, as much as I, I thought he did. The, you, yeah. yeah go ahead. The smart game plan wouldn't be to go to it, but you're right. I mean, he 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 averages maybe one takedown a fight. Ty, kind of hard to hold down initially, especially fresh. He'll, he'll get up. He'll get up. He didn't get up against Volk, but I mean, Volk. Uh, Volk's a beast, man. Volk, well, he's just a, he's such a big guy. Volk's a beast, he's man. So big. I think he's Pause. so underrated. Um, again, get right spike for Ty. I think Ty probably wins this by KO. But if it gets extended, and if you like the Ty Bora side, Live probably bet. wait. Live I bet. bet it late. And I think Ty Bora with his grappling, if he comes in with a smart game plan, could probably get this done. But I, I like Ty here. As long as mentally he's okay, and that knee isn't as compromised as it is, I think Ty should probably get this. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, he said he could have been ready for UFC Anaheim. Actually pushed back this fight to this Apex card just because I guess he didn't want the pressure of the fans, but as well too, he wanted to make sure he was completely ready with the knee situation that he's dealing with. Um, I like Ty. I think he's um, got decent decent first line defense with the um, takedown defense. I said defense three times, but yeah, you guys get the point. Um, <laughs> frankly, you know? Yeah, frankly. Frankie, <laughs> you know? But um, I think um, he's got the faster hand speed. He hits harder. If Tybura leaned more in his wrestling like a Sergey Spivak, I'd have a little more confidence, but he does not. If Sergey was fighting Ty, I'd be, I'd be playing Sergey, 100%. Um, I just don't like Tybura in the spot. He just He's coming off a knockout from Aspinall, who's one of the bigger punches, who didn't even hit him flush, by the way. No. He kind of hit him. It was like a straight like jab? Yeah. It was, well, I actually think it was a right, but it didn't hit him like straight on the chin. It hit him on the glove, and the glove kind of knocked him out. It was weird. It was... But the thing is, if Bam Bam hits him like that, yeah, it's gonna be fucking curtain. So I like I like Ty, um, I like him to kind of get back on the stool and get back on the on the rodeo with this um, by knockout. But March, if it gets out of the first second round and you see Ty sucking some air, we'll definitely be letting you guys know if we're playing a live bet spot on this because there's a very high possibility if it does get out of the first one or two rounds that Marshine's gonna take over this fight, probably hold him against the fence, put some knees to the body. Um, and if he gets you against the fence, he's actually a decent wrestler against the fence. He is. But he just hasn't shown enough to me to make me believe that he can get Ty out of there. So he's more like a gatekeeper at this point. So 
I like Ty. I like Ty via knockout. And that's it for UFC Vegas 88, top to bottom. Not as good as 299. Definitely not on name value. But decent matchmaking here overall. Some tight fights. I like I like the matchmaking here. I like the possibility for some finishes here. Could be a very entertaining card. But, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. But what I will say is that that's the end of uh, episode 47 of the Axe of the Combat podcast. You guys already know the business. Like, comment, subscribe, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok with VPN, of course. With VPN. <laughs> Everybody enjoying this uh, visual part of the uh, podcast here. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell to stay up to date. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google podcast, you already know. Um, not the best card, as my brother said, but... You know, we're going to find some value for you guys here. We're going to make sure you're safe and make sure you're not betting on fights that you probably shouldn't be betting on. Listen in, follow us on all social media platforms for updated bets because a lot of these fights are going to wait till weigh-ins. Love you guys. Once again, subscriptions are free. We are not, we do not charge for subscriptions, but show us some love. It helps the podcast and it's going to help us to grow further in the future to the plans that we have laid out uh, currently. So love you guys. Holla at ya. Take it easy. Peace.